Hey, what's up everyone? Chip here. And today I want to talk about bullions and a lot of misunderstandings about bullions. And I want to start off by mentioning this fellow here. His name's Howard Tricky. I don't know Howard. I've actually chatted with him a few times online. And Howard is responsible for the bullions in Blender. And in my mind, they are some of the best bullions of any surface modeler on the planet. Now, keep in mind, Blender is not a CAD application. And as such, it's not a solids model. And so programs like Fusion 360 and Onshape and SolidWorks and Moe they're all solids modelers. And so they do a really good job with what's called a solids kernel. They calculate booleans completely different than a surface modeler. But products like Maya, 3D Studio Max, Modo, Blender, SketchUp, they're all surface modelers. And surface modelers are much more difficult when it comes to dealing with booleans. And in my opinion, as I said, I think Howard's done an absolutely incredible job with Blender's booleans. In fact, I don't know that there are any better in surface modelers on the planet. Now, that being said, in the 2.9, I think it was 2.91 or maybe it was 2.92, I can't remember, but it's one of the 2.9 series releases. He introduced the the new exact booleans and exact booleans are even more powerful and more accurate than the fast booleans are but they're very much misunderstood and i've seen a lot of really smart people like ian hubert and Master Xeon, who don't really understand exactly how the exact Boolean works. And because I'm one of the developers of Synth, which is a KitOps add-on that adds literally hundreds and hundreds of Boolean modifiers to an object, I've had the great opportunity of delving into the Booleans and why they would work and why they wouldn't work. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a little bit, just to say thank you, Howard, for just a great job you've done with these Booleans. And I think Howard's also might be working on bevels, and I'm sure if he does as good a job with with bevels as he did with exact booleans, then man, I'm looking forward to how that turns out as well. So let's take a moment and let's examine the exact boolean modifier and let's look at five things that you need to be aware of when you're using the exact boolean modifier. The first thing we need to understand about booleans is that the objects that we're going to boolean together or subtract, they need to be what's called watertight and manifold. And what do I mean by that? Well, watertight means that there are no holes in the object because as we said, these are surface modelers and they're defined by the surfaces. So I tab into here and select this edge. And if I hit V, so I open this up, you can see that there's nothing inside here. Now, what's this red color. I'll tell you about that here in just a second. But right now, I just want you to understand that we want this to be watertight. Now, I just basically ripped this edge off of here. So if I click here and move up, I'm going to get this kind of thing going on. Whereas if I click on here and move it, you'll see that, you know, I don't, I don't get that. And so for a mesh to be watertight, the best way to figure it out is you just go into the object in the edit mode, select everything and go under select all by trait non-manifold. And if you see something like these edges that are being shown right here, if you see those, you know you're not manifold. How do I fix that? In this case, I'm just going to say, I'll select everything merged by distance, and then I'll go back into this and say select all by trait non-manifold, and you'll see that it says no faces, no vertices selected, right? Now, how do I get this little thing up here? That's easy. You just use this little statistics right here. So when you turn that on, that pops up there. That's nice. There's also a little down here. You also have stuff like scene statistics as well that you get to see things that are going on there. Now we understand that in order for two objects to Boolean together, they need to be watertight. Tab out of this. I'm going to talk a little bit about Booleans just so that we're, we're on the same page as far as that. So let's quickly talk about Boolean modifiers. If I just duplicate this and I want to subtract this from this, I basically set this, select that, say Boolean, and then I have it set to difference. I have it exact. I can fast, let's leave it fast for now. I use an eyedropper to click on this one, and that means that I've, I've basically subtracted this object from this, and if I go over to this cube, which is the second cube, this one, and I turn it off, we'll see that that's what that did. Now, as many of you already probably know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this. There's a shortcut for that, and it's under Preferences, and it's called Bull Tool, and you check that on, and then you can just basically select one, and then select the, the one you wanna subtract it from. Control Numpad Minus will make a difference modifier with exact and control numpad plus makes a positive modifier. But notice that it, it keeps the difference also. So let's delete this. Now let's talk about this a little bit. We have fast and exact. Now notice they don't do anything different here. And that's because we have two watertight meshes with no real issue as far as we can tell at this point. So one other thing I'll mention about bull tools is let's turn this off. And let's do a bull tool again, Shift D. And what I can do is I'll say, 
click, click, and say Control minus, notice what happened is Bool Tools automatically turned off the rendering, and in here, under Visibility, it turned all of these off as well, right? So it won't render in the, in the final scene either. And the other thing it does is under Viewport Display, it sets it to bounds. So if I want to bring it back, I'll set that to solid. I'll go in, turn all these on, and I'll turn that on. And now I can render that back and I can basically go into this object at this point and just delete this. And now we have where we started from. Okay, so that's just something that's worth understanding how Bool Tools works. So let's talk about this manifold issue again. I'm going to take this cube, it's our default cube, and I'm going to say Shift D to duplicate it, Y to duplicate on the Y, and I'll type in two. So I'm basically, I'm, I'm duplicating it so that it's right next to this one, and I'm going to just drag it out. Okay, so now I'm going to use Bool Tools, I'm going to say Control, Numpad, Plus, and now I've duplicated them. And there's, a, there's, that, there's that second cube, and you can see that if I hide this one, this is still just, a, it's just the wireframe. So, so now when I look at this cube, it looks like it's working pretty well. And remember, Bull Tools always uses exact. Let's put fast on there. And if I use fast, I can look at it and go, yeah, that worked really good. So that's no problem. Now I'm gonna apply this, this, this Boolean. I'm just go here and say apply it. And when I've applied it, I'm gonna tab into it and I'll hit, I'm gonna just go into x-ray mode. And you can see there's some stuff going on in between it. And if I select everything and go select by trait non-manifold, you see, oh, I don't have a manifold object anymore. Now, why is this important? Well, because the first rule when trying to create successful Booleans is that your mesh must be watertight and manifold, and this one's not. And so I can go back in and change this so that it is, but the simple fact is, is that now I've got a corrupted object, and anything I add to it is going to similarly stay corrupted. So I can put exact Booleans or not exact, and at some point it's going to break. And I'm going to show you that a little later, what I'm talking about, that it breaks. And we'll get to that in, in, in a little bit. But for now, just understand that even though it looks right and fast, if you're going to add more modifiers on, you can potentially have problems further down the chain. Now, sometimes, you know, it doesn't really matter, right? Sometimes you don't really care and you just, you know, you're just looking for an effect or, or just an overall shape and that's, and fast works fine. But for when you're adding a lot of complex geometry to a object and using Booleans to do that, you're going to find that you're going to want to use exact. But that being said, you may want to use fast all the way up until the end when you hit the exact, when you convert everything to exact. And I'm going to talk about how you do that also here in just a second. So I'm going to undo out, out of all this stuff. Let's go, let's undo. And we're back into here. So we have our Booleans set up. So let's go ahead and let's make this exact now. And we're going to apply and I'm going to tab into this. And now I'm going to say select all by trait non-manifold. And look, because it's exact, now we have a complete and manifold Boolean object. So that's the difference. Now, what's the trade-off? Well, of course, exact is going to take a lot more time, especially when you have 10, 20, 30 different Boolean operations you have to deal with. It will take a lot more time. Okay, so that's the number one thing is the mesh must be watertight and manifold. Let's move on to the second item. So let's talk about the second issue uh, with regard to Booleans and especially the exact modifier. So let's take these two cubes. I'm going to select the first one and the second one. Control numpad minus to separate them, and it didn't work. And this is probably an issue many of you run into quite often. You're wondering, why didn't it work? Wait a minute, I go to fast. Fast works. Exact's not working. So fast must be better than exact. And that's not the case at all. And the reason why is that there's a little known fact about exact that's really important. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna go up in here and I'm gonna turn on face orientation. And what this is showing me is that blue means that we're seeing the normals facing correctly, whereas red means that they're flipped. If I go back in here and I turn off face orientation and I go in tab and I select all these and I go under mesh normals and flip them and tab, and then we'll go ahead and do that Boolean again, you'll see it works. So what does this mean? Well, this means that exact requires that the faces are oriented correctly. And if an object has flipped faces, if any of them are flipped, you're going to have problems with exact. So you want to make sure and always check your face orientation for your objects. Well, you're saying, okay, that's great. That's a lot of work to keep toggling back and forth. Let me show you what I do. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go back and I'm going to 
flip those. Shift N, by the way, recalculates them, and I want to make them inside because I know that's going to be wrong, right? So if I go back in here and do face orientation, you see that they're wrong. But then what I want is I really only want to show faces when they're wrong, not when they're right. So let me show you how I, I work with that. I go into preferences. I forget I saw this tip somewhere, and it's a great tip. And I go into themes, and I'll go into 3D viewport, and I'm going to scroll all the way down, and you see we have the face orientation back. It's that red, and it's got an alpha transparency and front alpha transparency. So I'm going to click in here, and this alpha transparency for this front I'm going to make it completely, turn it completely off and then save the preferences. And now I'm only going to show problematic faces. So if I come back in here, tab into this, say A, I got it set to a quick favorites flip. Now you can see that we're working correctly. So once that's done, I always make sure go in here and just, I just leave face orientation checked all the time, right? And this is a great way to automatically know anytime you're working with flip faces, especially in Booleans. So this is a real important step. If you have any faces that are flipped in either of your objects, the exact modifier is just not gonna work. Now the fast modifier will do its best, but it's never as good as the exact, right? So that's the number two most important thing we need to understand when using the exact modifier. So the third issue is probably one that you're not gonna run into very often, but it's worth talking about anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna add a cube, and with it selected, let's go ahead and scale it up 10,000 times. We'll go to our view, our clip start 1,000, and our clip in like 200,000. And then let's, it appears. So now we can see our object. So here's our object here. And I'm gonna shift duplicate this Y like this. And then I'll just hold the control key down, snap it together. So we have something that's kind of a hard Boolean to do, right? When they're sharing coplanar faces. And if I select both of them and hit control plus, you can see that we get something that actually looks good, it's exact. And it, it may be good, but if I tab into this object and go into perspective mode, it looks like we have a face in here. And I'm not sure why that is. Let's go into Alt-Z. You can see that we have this face where we really shouldn't. And the reason for this is because we're at this ridiculous scale. And if you're working at ridiculously large scales or ridiculously small scales, then you're going to probably run into some kind of problems and uh, you probably are already running into problems but I thought I'd mention this anyway and just make sure that here in your scene settings you know if you're going to work at a very large scale then change your units instead of one make it 1000 right and then all of a sudden you're working in a scale that's a little easier for Blender to understand so I just want to mention this because I think it's an important concept. It's not a something you probably run into very often, but especially for 3D printing, which actually the exact modifier is absolutely great for 3D printing. You know, you're going to want to work with a scale like something like 0.1 or something like that, because you're typically working in millimeters and not meters. That's just a, a piece of advice and you'll get higher precision booleans when you're working at a proper scale. For this next issue, I have a couple of examples I want to share with you. This was a file that someone on my Discord uh, gave me and said that booleans just aren't working. And so there's a couple things that I noticed when I started troubleshooting this file. Uh, first thing I should mention, when I want to troubleshoot a file, I use this plugin called 3D View KitOps Toggle VP Display. It's a free plugin that comes with the free version of KitOps or the pro version of KitOps. Uh, and it allows me to very quickly uh, go through and change the viewport display properties. Like if I take this object right here and I click here and I go into viewport display and I go from bounds, I can go from bounds to wire or wire to solid or textured, you know. But I can also do the same thing using that plugin. If I just install it, Control Alt Shift Z just toggles between those three things. So I can do that. And as I do that, the first thing I notice is that I don't have face orientation turned on. So I turn that on, and then when I do this, I see right away that, okay, I've got a problem with this face right here. So I'm going to go in here, tab in there, say A, uh, Q, flip them, tab, and come back, and then I'll turn that back into a bounding box. But I still don't have the right model, because this surface is supposed to be Boolean union to this, and yet it's not. And if I come in here and I look at this guy, I'm going to look here, I see I'm using exact here. So what's going on? Well, one thing I can look at is I am working at a very tiny scale, but that still should not be the problem. And then I thought, oh yeah, let's look above at this Boolean, the first one. 
sure enough, it's set to fast. And I think we talked about this a little earlier, but if you're going to use exact and you want it to work properly, they all must be exact. And once they are exact, you can see that now we get a perfect Boolean. And it's something that I've kind of come to realize as I start to use the exact modifiers more and more, and that is trust the exact modifier. Trust that it's going to give you the right Boolean and understand that if it's not giving the right Boolean, then you've got something wrong in your geometry or how you're setting up your Booleans. Once we got this set up, I could show my friend what was going on and then he could understand how best to use Booleans. So let me show you another example. So here I have a plain cube. If I tab into it, you can see I've got the top surface selected. I'm using Synth, which is a KitOps product, which allows me to add a lot of different inserts on top of a, a surface. And this is going to be at using the Boolean union modifier. These particular inserts I know are Boolean union modifiers. So if I take this first layer and I hit do it, I'm going to get a list of objects. So I'm going to clear that out, turn it off, turn the second one on, hit do it, and I get a different set of objects, right? If I turn them both on and clear and say do it, I get this. And what's going on here is you can see that we've got something that is not working correctly. We'll go down to here to, to the second layer and on the outro, I'm gonna hit the exact button. Now notice it's gonna take a lot longer and it's a, it's it's taking a lot longer, but it still didn't get it right. And so what's going on? Well that exact button only applies to that first layer. So if I look at the actual box and I go into our modifiers, you can see all these modifiers, but the very first layer, these are all still fast. So if I go back up into the first layer this one here, and it's going to take a little while because I've got auto update turned on, and I set that to exact, now I will get a perfect set of balloons, even though some of them are right on top of each other. And so that's the power of the exact Boolean. And that's why I believe so strongly in it is because I literally have objects with hundreds of modifiers on them, and they all render out perfectly. And if they don't, I know I have a problem with one of my inserts. One of my modifier inserts is not correct. So the key takeaway here on this number four point is you need to be sure and not mix fast and exact. Even though it may work sometimes, there's going to be a lot of times when you run into Boolean problems and they won't work. So when working with lots and lots of modifiers, I find that many times it's easy just to use fast all the time. And then at the very end, once you have something that you know that needs exact, you just toggle them all to exact. And that's why I created in the Design Magic MetaShape add-on, we have this Boolean set to fast. This basically pulls this object and says that there are some set to fast. And if I hit this button once, it'll make sure they're all set to fast. And then I hit it again, and now it's going to set them all to exact. So there is a way to do that. I think HardOps also has a tool that can do the exact same thing. So sometimes when you've got a ton of modifiers, it's good to be able to toggle them back and forth quickly, figure out if there's an issue. So the last issue, number five, is actually a little bit of a strange one. I don't really understand it that well, but I have found when I've got perhaps over 300 or 400 modifiers that the exact starts to fail. And I don't know exactly why or how, because troubleshooting 400 modifiers is just too big of a project. And I have seen it. I've looked through the inserts to make sure the inserts are all correct, and they are. And so I'm just going to chalk it up to some sort of overall complexity. Still, I have not identified that as a specific exact Boolean problem. And it could be just a synth problem, because the only time it happens is when I'm using synth to generate hundreds and hundreds of Boolean operations on a single object. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I know this is a very complex subject, and it's one that's very much misunderstood by a lot of people. I am so impressed with this exact Boolean modifier, and I just thought it was really time to create a video that explains the specifics of it and how to troubleshoot it and how to best use it. As I mentioned before, it's really good for 3D modeling because because when used properly, it creates full watertight manifold objects. And it's one of the reasons why we use it in our Design Magic product, where we can just basically go in and choose Boolean subtractions, Boolean additions, and all different kinds of objects that we can add and subtract to from existing objects. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you online.